Welcome to part three of robotic arm manipulation with reinforcement learning. We are going to go ahead and code out the replay buffer. So, uh, if you've worked with other reinforcement learning problems, you're probably already familiar with the re replay buffer. But uh, TD3, uh, DDPG, even just standard Q learning, tends to rely on a large buffer of past experiences and then it trains in batches in an off policy way. Um, so instead of training, you know, in line where every time you take a step, you try to learn from it, uh, it is more sample efficient in that every time it takes a step, it stores that step in a buffer. And then that buffer is uh, sampled from in batches for training purposes. So we are going to go ahead and code up that buffer class starting with let's go ahead and create uh, we're going to call it buffer.py so buffer and the only import we should need is numpy so we're going to import numpy as np and normally the things that you're going to store are we're going to store state, and you'll see this is pretty common in most um, reinforcement learning papers, we're going to be storing state, action, reward, next state, and done. So, you know, the current state, what action we took, what the reward was, and then what the next state is, um, and whether we're in a done status or not. So, with that in mind, let's go ahead and start. We're going to call it class replay buffer. And we're going to init self max size input shape and actions self dot mem size equals max size. So you don't want, you know, replay buffers can get quite large. You don't want them to just be unlimited um, for a couple reasons. One is obviously memory in your computer. You, you do want to have some kind of cap on how much memory your, your program can use. And if you're training for 10 million time steps, that could be a lot of memory. The other reason you care about this is uh, you actually don't want it to store memory from the beginning of time. For most problems because you want it to have a slight bias towards recent experiences so normally your your buffer size is what helps determine you want you want a long enough buffer to where it gets a broad range of experience but you want a short enough buffer to where you can uh, you're not just sampling from the random actions the agent was taking at the very beginning of training so for many of these problems, the magic number seems to be about a million, but uh, that will change from problem to problem. So we're going to do mem counter equals zero, self.state memory, oh, let me spell that correctly, equals np.zeros, and we're basically just building out our memory structures here. Self.mem size star input shape self dot new state memory equals np dot zeros and uh, np dot zeros is basically going to take the shape that you're passing in and it's going to fill it with zeros so that gives us a, a set uh, object that we can go in and store these things in self dot m size our input shape. Okay. Self dot action memory is going to be np dot zeros. Self dot mem size again, and an actions, and then self dot reward memory is just going to be np dot zeros. Self dot mem size. Uh, and then finally, self.terminal memory is 
is going to be np dot zeros self oh we don't need that double paren there self dot mem size and we're just setting the dtype bool for this one we want that to be a boolean all right and then we need methods to store our transitions and to sample from the buffer so def store transition it's going to be self state action reward next state done and we're going to do index equals self dot mem counter percent uh, self dot mem size and self state memory index equals state and you can start to see what we're doing here um, we are we are indexing so for every we've got a mem we've we've started out with a certain size of memory as we store transitions we're incrementing we're going to increment that memory count so we're grabbing the index we are going to store our, our settings and then we're going to uh, increment mem counter plus one at the end uh, let's go ahead instead of next state since we called this um, actually let's just say let's call this next state memory I want to keep that naming pattern the same so next state memory next state um, all right let's keep going so self dot next state memory index equals next state self dot action memory index equals action self dot reward memory index equals reward self dot terminal memory so did the did the episode end index equals done all right, and then finally, we are going to say mem counter plus equals one. All right, so we have successfully stored our transitions here. Finally, we are going to go ahead and create our sample buffer. Sample buffer self batch size. So as we work with the buffer, Every single time something happens, we're going to go and store a transition. So that's what, you know, hey, we've taken a time step, we've, we've done something with the robot, we're going to go store that previous state, next state, action, etc. Um, when we go into training, we're going to be able to pull a batch of size, batch size from those, those transitions, that data. So we're going to do max min equals min self dot m counter self dot m size so what that's saying is we want the maximum memory item we can sample from to be either so the the minimum so the lesser of either self mem counter so or self mem size so if we've already if we've uh, got a million in memory slots and we've only uh, incremented to 50,000 we want max mem to equal the 50,000 all right batch is going to be np.random.choice that's where this is going to come in max mem and batch size And then states equals self dot. Then we're going to start actually pulling. So this is declaring a batch of uh, coordinates, so to speak, uh, ind indices. Coordinates is the wrong word. Uh, this is going to pull a batch of ind uh, indices. And now we are going to use those to pull from our batch. Next states equals self dot next state memory batch actions 
equals self dot actions uh, action memory is what we called it batch rewards equals self dot reward memory batch duns equals self dot terminal memory batch and then we're going to return states actions rewards next states duns all right and that is the end of the buffer class so let's go back to our main over here and we're just going to write uh, some throwaway code to do some basic testing of the classes we put together here so first off let's go ahead and say from uh, networks import star so first we're going to test the networks class that we wrote in the last iteration and really uh, or in the last video and I really just want to make sure I can create them so we're gonna say critic network equals critic network and let's see what we made required parameters so everything else can be default uh, but we need to have input dims and n actions. So we're going to say 8 and 8. Uh, these could be anything, but actor network equals actor network 8 and 8, same thing. And let's go ahead and run this and just make sure. All right, let's see. Ah, this is expecting a tuple, I believe. Hmm. So what we're running into here, and this is what I get for coding on the fly, what we're running into is it is expecting an input type that uh, matches what the, uh, there we go. All right, it was expecting an input type that was matching what the gym library would have output for that input dims value, and it was expecting a uh, list here. So those are working, at least in the most basic way. Um, and then let's just make sure we can call uh, we can create a replay buffer. So replay buffer equals replay buffer. Oh, I have to import it. That'd be a good start. From buffer import replay buffer. And really, I should be a little more explicit here as well. Uh, from bus from networks import critic network actor network. Um, either works. It just makes it a lot easier for someone reading your code to know that we are specifically pulling in critic network and actor network, not just import star from thing, um, unless you really need to. All right, replay buffer equals replay buffer. And then we had max size, input shape, and n actions as our uh, list here. So let's do eight, eight, and eight and see what blows up here. All right, and we successfully declared a critic network, actor network, and replay buffer. Um, and this is important. You know, we could type the entire thing out and run it, um, but in the real world, as you're as you're coding these things out, you don't really want to find out once you've got hundreds of lines of code that you have a bug. Um, we're trying to find out now if any of the basic functions of any of these classes, uh, at least the ability to create them, is going to throw an error. And it looks like for the most part, the answer is no. So this was all, again, throwaway code. I'm going to go ahead and comment that out. And in the next video, we will start uh, coding out the agent. So see you back then.